This is the 18th lecture, and I'm going to talk about the boundary of manifolds. So here I'll give you a definition. So when M is a K manifold and Rn, and we pick a point P, so the interior point of the manifold, what it should be satisfied that there exists a coordinate patch about P such that the domain is open in Rk. Otherwise, it's just a boundary point. And we say this is the collection of boundary of the manifolds. And don't get like confused. It is not the same as this. They're not the same. That is the boundary and general topology. But this is the, uh, we give a new definition of boundary on manifolds, which is the negation of this statement. Okay. All right. So here we have a first theorem. <coughs> the theorem states that so for a K manifold in Rn, we let alpha zero and alpha one be two coordinate patches on it. So here is a diagram. So for, for this part, this is alpha one and this is alpha zero, they are coordinate patches. And this is the area they coincide. Well, if you take the inverse image back, right? So V0, this is, this is our V0, and this is our V1. And this is our W, the area they collapse, they, not collapse, they, they coincide. And we let WI be each corresponding alpha i to inverse image of w, which is these two areas, w1 and w0. And the function, the inverse of a1 composite with alpha0. So alpha0, you map from w0 to here, right? And then you take the inverse image back. So it maps from w0 to w1. Well, the domain needs to be W0, otherwise, well, we just, we just restrict our domain to be 0, W0. And this function turns out to be class of CR, and the derivative is non-singular. Well, here, this is just one example, and there are two more examples right here. Look at here, look at here. They're just different examples. And we call this is the transition function between coordinate patches. Well, this is what we're looking for. And here's theorem 24.1. So the theorem, like this is a summary. So basically this mapping maps from here to here is a CR function and the derivative is non-singular. Well, the domain of this function need to be this. We can take a look at the diagram once more. So here we have alpha zero and the domain can only be taken to here. If we have a point here, say M maps to here, well this is not in the image set of alpha one. So the inverse image is not defined, right? So it needs to be the, in the image set. Well. The proof is that, as we know, alpha zero is CR. The only thing we need to show is the inverse image is also CR, so that the composition is CR. And again, by chain rule, the derivative is non-singular because we've just calculated directly. Well, this function is non-singular, right? And this function is also, this, this matrix is also non-singular because it's already represented as a, as the inverse of a given matrix. So, of course. Sorry, I just mistaken. So this argument is not uh, correct. Well, so just erase this part. Now, um, Also, we know that we similar so 
person now, are we? We can get... So now we can get what? We can get another way around. There's CR, right? So which means that... <coughs> so we have these two functions are CR and they're inverse of each other. You can verify this. So if they're inverse of each other, then by chain rule, the derivative is not singular for both d alpha zero and alpha one of the right because we know that by seven point four seven point four If a function has a differentiable inverse, then by chain rule, the derivative is non-singular, right? Well, to show, so we only need to show that a given coordinate patch when we show the inverse is CR. But by our first lemma in lecture, by last lecture 23.1, it suffices to show that it is locally CR. It is locally CR. Well, which is basically saying that if we have a coordinate patch, right, then for any point V, P not in the image set, for any point P, this can be extend to a CR function defined on the neighborhood of P, P not. Right, so we only need to show that if we show this, if we show that for any p and v, so alpha is from u to v a coordinate patch, for any point, the inverse can be extended to a zero function defined on a neighborhood of p naught, and the neighborhood is open in R n. We just let the note the, we just let x naught becomes this. Well, so. We just supposed to set u. We just supposed to set u is open in H k but not in R k. Then we can extend it to beta, a CR map, u prime open in R k. And then we know that as the derivative of alpha at x naught has rank k because alpha is a coordinate patch, and x naught right, x naught is in u and assume we just assume the first k rows are independent and we let pi be a projection map so that um, it maps to the kth coordinate so pi x1 to xn it maps to xi and this is like the kth the kth coordinate so that the derivative of this function the jacobian matrix is going to be look like this now we just define g be the composition of pi and beta then for x naught the derivative of g of x naught is equal to this well this is by lemma 23.2 because x naught is in u right then the derivative of beta is independent like it's depend on alpha this, this is lemma 24.2 well then we just multiply out it becomes this so this is precisely the kth row which means that this is non-singular then we can apply the inverse function theorem right we know that g is a cr diffeomorphism on a w neighborhood of x naught Okay, because this is by inverse function theorem. And then now we just consider another function h to become the composition of the inverse of g with pi. And this is also CR because it, 
this is CR and this is also CR. This is because G is a diffeomorphism. Then H is defined on this set. And this set is open to HRK. Now, also we know that the set W intersect with U, we denote it as U naught. The set this is open in U, right? Because W is open, right? So this is open in U. And alpha of U naught is equal to V naught, we denote it as V naught is open in V. This is because the continuous function alpha negative one, right? And this set this set V naught is a neighborhood of P naught because X is in U naught is in W. So V let's see V is a neighborhood of P naught. Then we know that if V naught is open in V. Then there exists an A open Rn such that the intersection of A with V is equal to V naught. This is the definition of open sets in a, like a subspace topology. Well, we just intersect A with the set this so that A is in the domain of H. We just make it smaller by intersecting A with this set. So, so that we make A is in the domain of H, is contained in the domain of H. So that H from A to RK, well, A is again open set, right? H from A to RK is CR function. Now, if P is in V naught, then we know that by definition, X is equal to some alpha negative one apply to P. Then we just do calculation. Because H of P is equal to H of alpha of X. This is our, and then we, by definition, we expand it. And then this is equal to G because alpha is equal to beta because X is in U naught and U naught is a subset of U. Well, G of beta is, is an extended function, right? It only changes outside of U, but we're talking in U, so we can just make it to alpha. Well, by definition, is equal to this. And you just go to X and right here and then we're done because we have h of p equal to f of p right and again we first we define we not define we assume that we assume that u is open in hk but not in rk now if u is open in rk the extended neighborhood u prime, we just let it equal to u, we just let beta equal to alpha, and then the rest re remains unchanged, and then we are done. Cause let us let us summarize our process here. So, <clears throat> um, we want to show that finding p. Okay. So. For any p naught, right? We have a function h. We have a function h that is CR, and and also a is open, right? And we also know that. P naught is in A because P naught because P naught is in V naught, right? Because this is a neighborhood of X naught, right? Because X naught is in W and is also in U, so yep, and we know that alpha of x naught is equal to p naught, right? So we know that v naught, 
so we know that P-naught, A is a neighborhood of P-naught, right, because here, right? So, yep, we have for any point P, or for any P, V, P, and V-naught, right? We have a function H to find a neighborhood of P, not right such that such that when p is in v naught and v naught v naught is the domain of the extended function and the domain of our given function alpha negative one right so for any p and v naught we have it is equal to this so we have an extended function cr function and we are done by lemma 23.1 right which is sufficient to show that by lemma 23.1 because if you're not clear uh, you could just look at the statements of 23.1 which is fairly long but you just check all the conditions one by one and then it is sufficient to prove and we, we just finished the proof okay and what someone might, might have why, why is g is a diffeomorphism? morphism because g is of beta beta takes value from rk right and pi again maps value to rk so G is a different morphism and RK. Oh yeah, like there's so many sets and variables, so it gets tedious to handle them. Well, here is a diagram. The diagram might be more clear. So what we have is that we have an alpha, right? Alpha is the coordinate patch and we extend it this is beta, right? This is beta. We extended the u become u prime, right? Here's the u prime, and then we extend it. Now, what we have defined is we define pi is the projection map, right? Projection for any r n elements we mapped to like just, we just keep the k -th, first k -th coordinate. <laughs> And G is the composition of beta and pi. So G maps from here to here. Oh, and then we know and we proved that it turned out that G is a diffeomorphism of some neighborhood W, right? W of X naught. And then here, what we have done is that our U naught, right? Our U naught. Is the intersection of W and U. See? So this is our U naught. It's intersection of W and U. Here is U, right? And V naught, again, what is V naught? Is V intersecting with some alpha. No, with some A, I'm sorry. With some A. Then, from U naught to V naught, right? Our function H right on V naught on V naught H is the same as the inverse of alpha so that we just extend it we just have an extended one all right so this one is kind of it's a bit long and there's too many variables. I know it is hard to keep on track. All right, so <clears throat> we have a lemma, a lemma for criterion, criterion of a point being an interior or a boundary point on a manifold. So AB is a criterion being interior and C is the criterion being boundary points. And for the rest of the lecture, we're going to use this lemma over and over again. So eventually you will memorize it. First, 
The statement is that let m be a k manifold in R m and alpha is a coordinate patch of point p of m. So a says that if the set u, if the domain of the coordinate patch is open at R k, then it automatically is an interior point. Well, the proof of a is really easy because a is basically the definition. A is basically the definition of interior points of manifold because it's interior if this such as use open R k. So this is just the definition. Okay. This is just the definition. And B is says that if U is open at HK and P is equal to alpha X naught for some X naught is in HK plus. It's like strictly upper half space. Right? Then P is an interior point. And C says that if U is open in the upper half face and P is equal to some alpha x naught for x naught is in here. Well, this means that the kth coordinate of x naught is on the axis. So if it's r, r1, if it's r times 0, it basically says that you're on here, right? So if it's like the 3D, if it's like the 3D axis, you're like somewhere on the xy plane. Right, you're somewhere on the xy plane. So that is the meaning. So <clears throat> here is the proof. Of B, we say that okay, let u mod equal to u intersecting with the strictly upper half space. We let u not be equal to u. U is open HK. All right. And we let v naught be the image set of alpha under u naught. Then we conclude that alpha on u naught is a coordinate patch about p, and u naught is open in R k. Right. Then we know that is open R k. Then by part a, right. We know that P is the interior point of M. By part A. Okay, so here are two points that need to, need to be just justified. So first one is says that alpha restrict on U naught is a coordinate patch about P. Well, because U naught is open in U, right? Because the strictly upper half space is open in HK. Right? And then we use lemma 23.3. So 23.3 means that, okay, u not this is open in this, right? Then we know that the restriction is also a coordinate patch. Okay, for two, we want to show that u not is open in RK. Well, first we know that it's open in HK because first we know that u we know that u is open in hk but we so yeah, yeah u is open in hk means that u is equal to some u prime intersecting which with hk something open in rk right then u naught is just equal to u intersect with hk plus because this is a subset of this right and h plus k is open in rk and this is also open in rk so we know that u naught is open in rk so part b we are done and for part c part c so part c here is part c u is open in upper half space and p is equal to some x of x naught where x naught lies on like the the axis some axis sense of set you know what i'm saying then p is a boundary point well First, we just let alpha not from u not v not be the coordinate patch about p, and u not is open in h k. And let p equal to alpha not x not, or x not is in this set. So we just writing down what are we given, and we assume p is interior point. So we derive a contradiction. 
So what it means by P is the interior point, which means that there exists another coordinate patch about P, where the domain is open at RK. And then we derive a contradiction. So here we go. As V0 and V1 is open in M, right? So their intersection is also open in M. By our definition, this is by our definition of a manifold. And we let WI be the inverse image of alpha I with respect under, no, under like W for I equals 0 and 1. So we have two of them. Then we know that this is open in HK and it contains x naught by the continuity, by continuity, right? Because there are coordinate patches. There are three, um, there are three uh, conditions of being a coordinate patch. Like there's a lot of them, but three of them listed is that is CR and the inverse is continuous and the rank is rank K, if you're a K manifold. And W1, is open in RK. So by our last theorem, we know that this composition, right? Exact same thing. This composition is bijection, is a bijection and a CR and has non-singular derivative. So by theorem 8.2, we know that W0 is open in RK, i.e. the image set is open in RK by theorem 8.2 which is the theorem we use to prove the inverse function theorem, right? It says that, let me just take a look. So it says that if, if it's an injection and the derivative is non-singular, now we're doing more than that, right? We have bijection, so, and a CR, yeah, of course. So the image set, the image set is open in RK. Well, we have it is open in RK, but we show that it is also not open in RK because X0 is in this set, right? And also X0 is in U0, not W0, and W0 is a subset of HK, right? Because this says to be open in HK. Well, then what we have is a no neighborhood of X0 in RK is contained in W0 so that xk so that um the set w naught is not open in rk it's not open in rk here's a general topology problem well here is an example so here that perhaps is h2 including the x-axis and here's our w naught open set at hq that contains the point x naught that lies on the x-axis well for any neighborhood of x naught, right? For any neighborhood, it cannot be contained in W naught by eyeball or by dark magic, right? So here's a contradiction. You can argue this using like, you write down what precisely what it is, how's it gonna be look like, but here's a, like a diagram provided in the textbook. So here we have W naught, right? And W one naught, we can't map to some some boundary sense of set. Okay, so note with this lemma, we know that HK is a K manifold and RK. So IE which like which says that the upper half space, the upper half space is a two manifold and R two. Yeah. So what is this? That okay. So for any P and HK, right? If P is on the axis, is on the set, then we just consider, we just consider a, a neighborhood with radius one intersecting with HK and alpha be the identity map. Then we get a, like a coordinate patch, right? Identity map automatically has like all the three conditions, bijection, CR, whatever, inverse, yeah. Rank, yeah, of course. Right, so, and this is open in HK. This is open in HK. So, if this is open in HK, we require this open either in RK or HK, if, it's a, if it is a manifold, K-manifold, right? Now, if P is not, 
in this set. We just consider this. We just consider the pk, the, the distance of pk to p. So here's like a giant diagram. So it's here, right? We just take, we just take this neighborhood, right? And that would be the identity map. Then, then we have a coordinate patch and the domain of the coordinate patch is open and rk, right? It's open and rk. So combined with these two, you see that for any p, for any p, right? We have a coordinate patch, blah, blah, blah. So that is a k-manifold. And secondly, we have that the boundary of this manifold is just this set. It's just the axis set or the upper half set or whatever. But that's, that is the boundary. Well, if we just make an example here, the boundary of this manifold, the boundary of this HK manifold, the boundary of this is just our axis, right? Like the boundary. So for this direction, this is part C of lemma. Just go take a look at part C. And this direction, we use contrapositive. So if assume P is not in this set, then again, we just consider this set open RK or identity map. So by part A, P is an interior. So which means that if it is not in here, then it's not in here, which means that by contrapositive, we are done. Okay. And now we have another theorem, 24.3. It says that if M is a K manifold, then the boundary, if the boundary is not empty, then the boundary is a k minus one manifold without boundary. So the boundary of a manifold is a manifold without boundary. Oh my god. Of class here, yeah. Okay, so 24.3. So, we just let P be on the boundary, okay? So, we just let construct a coordinate patch about P because M is a manifold, exists, of course. So, by part A of last lemma, U must be open in HK. And by part B of last lemma, we know that P is equal to S on X0, where X0 is in the boundary of HK. So by the lemma again, alpha maps this set into the interior points, right? Alpha maps this set into all the interior points and it maps all this sets into boundary points. And we know that alpha, the image of alpha under this set is equal to V intersecting with the boundary of M because we are given that alpha is a bijection and it maps this into this, right? Because, okay, so if you wanna be, this direction is obvious, and for this direction, if you're in V, then you should be in alpha U, right? And you also should be on the, you're also required to be on the boundary, so you must be on, you must be on this set. So that it maps to you, right? Okay, let us just denote V intersect with delta M to be equal to V naught. Now this set is open and delta, uh, not delta, D, the boundary of M, right? Because V is open and uh, M, right? V is open and M. So yeah, this is a subset of M, so. We're doing subset topology here. Subspace topology, sorry. Now, we just let U0 be another open set in our k minus 1 such that the Cartesian product of U0, U0 with 0 is equal to this. So U intersect with the boundary of HK. This set. Okay. Well, this 
this boundary is just what rk minus 1 times 0, right? So all the points in here, their last coordinate must be 0. And we're doing like rk minus 1, right? So just in sense of product topology, right? in sense of product topology, this u not exists, right? Because rk minus 1 is like you can view it as a metric topology or you can view it as a metric topology but they turn out to be homeomorphic so it doesn't matter yeah i know they're not like they're like they're like the same topology the metric topology soup metric euclidean metric and the order topology and the product topology they're like all right, let's just stop here. Let's just keep going. Okay, so now if x is in u naught, so f x is in u naught, right? We define alpha naught of x to be alpha of x zero. Okay, then alpha zero, it takes value from u naught and it maps to v naught, right? Because is alpha x zero, alpha x zero, which is set in alpha x zero, which is like from here, right? Which is exactly this set. It maps from this set, alpha maps from this set to this set, which is v naught. So so alpha naught maps from u naught to v naught. Now this set is CR because alpha is CR, and the derivative has rank k minus one because. The derivative of alpha naught is just the first k minus one columns of this. And the inverse of this is continuous because this function is equal to the composition of pi and the restriction of alpha inverse on v naught. And Pi is just a projection that maps from so k x1 to xk and maps to x1 to xk minus 1. And this function is obviously continuous, right? Because it's all it's CR, or C infinity function, or whatever, right? So, with all these conditions satisfied, we can conclude that alpha 0 is a coordinate patch on delta m about p as desired. Well, you might wonder. What are the blue lines doing? These are like the key information we need. So we let p be equal b n delta m, right? To not delta m, sorry, just boundary m. So for any point p and the boundary, right? We have an open set v naught open in boundary, and let us say u naught open in R K right such that the set alpha not from u not to v not is bijection because we have here this is bijection and it's cr blah 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 then we have that alpha not is a coordinate patch on this about p and the domain is the domain is open in rk so if we can summarize even more, we say that for any p on the boundary, this open set v naught neighborhood open and boundary, and the u naught open and r k minus one, and an alpha such that is a coordinate patch about p. So by our definition of manifolds without boundary, right? So this, this is boundary M right is a k minus one manifold without boundary the k minus one because this is open in k minus one and, right all right so so there's a special name the coordinate patch alpha on delta constructed in the proof is said to be the restricting to coordinate patch alpha on m and finally, we have another theorem. 
for constructing manifolds. So first we let O be an open and R n and F map from O to R as a real value function, C R real value function. We let M be the set of all points for which Fx maps to zero. Or in linear algebra, we just call it, or in abstract algebra, we just call it kernel of F. Kernel of F. And we let n be the set of points for which f is non-negative. Suppose that the kernel m is non-empty and the derivative of f on m has rank 1 at each point. Then n, which is the set of non-negative points, is an n-manifold in Rn. And m is just the boundary of this manifold. And the boundary manifold is the manifold with a boundary in our like m minus one, right? So here is a summarized statement. So we have f of n is just zero to image set, f m is not empty, and the derivative is not equal, and f is not negative on n. Then we know that n is an m manifold in R n here. So here's the proof. We suppose that p is an n. So first. We assume that fp is positive. So as f is continuous, right? So f is locally positive around p. So the set u for all the set positive is open, right? Because each point has a neighborhood around it. It's locally positive. This is a standard analysis uh, consequence. And you should, you should know, like, you should know it immediately it's trivial and u is open right u is open and what it's open in rn but u is still essentially a subset of m right because all the points are positive so u is essentially a subset of n so it's also open in n right now we just let alpha be the identity map. Then trivially, alpha is a coordinate match about P on N, domain is open in Rn. All right. So the domain is open in Rn, and the range, the image set, is open in N. So it is a coordinate patch about P. Okay, second, if P is in M, right, the kernel, it maps to zero. Then, by our assumption, by our hypothesis, we know that the derivative at this point is non-zero, which means that one of the partial derivatives should not be zero. Otherwise, we get a contradiction. So we just suppose, we just, for convenience, we assume the last one is non-zero. And we define a new function, f, by big F is equal to so the last coordinate is just fx. Okay, then we calculated derivative. The derivative for these two is just like the identity matrix for this one, just zero. For this, we don't care, we don't care. And the last one is dnf. Well, because the, these are like all non-zero, right? So the rank is equal to n. They're all independent, right? The rank is equal to n which means that is non-singular because we have a square matrix, right? Well, then if it's non, the derivative is non-singular and we have a CR function, right? Because we, we assume F is CR, right? Yeah, F is CR, always CR. So by inverse function theorem, right, f is a diffeomorphism morphism of a neighborhood on P to a random arbitrary open set B. And A is a neighborhood of P. <laughs> because we assume that, right, derivative of P is zero, right? So, right, this. Okay, now we also have that f maps a intersect with n on to b intersect with upper half space of rn which is hn right 
because you're in a domain, right? And you're also in N. So that this one should be greater than zero, right? Then your last coordinate should be greater than zero, right? And you're also in B because we're taking an A, so. And also, if F is in A intersect with M, then you're on the boundary because the last coordinate should be zero. So you're on the boundary of this manifold. So in conclusion, if we can consider the inverse of this big F, the inverse of bit, this big F maps from this to this, right? A to B. So the inverse of here to here, this inverse. This inverse is a coordinate patch on N about P. So here's the justification. So this set is open in HN, right? Because B, B is open in RN. Then this set is open in HN. And this set, A is open, then A is open in N, and A contains P, right? Okay. So we have the neighborhoods done, we have the neighborhoods done, and this is of course a bijection because it's defined as an inverse of the sum function. And because F is a diffeomorphism, so itself is also CR, and the rank is non-singular because the necessary condition of having a differentiable inverse is that your derivative should be non-singular. So that is them that is illustrated and I think it's theorem seven point three somewhere in the book. But it's a coordinate patch. And lastly one of verified is this one. And this is by C of the lemma. Because any point FP is equal to this, right? Because FP is equal to zero. Right? Then we know that f inverse of this is equal to p, right? By definition of inverse function. Well, this point is somewhere here. So what we have that is for p is an m, right? We have neighborhoods, we have a coordinate patch about p on m, right? On m. But M is a subset of N, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> but here, we have that A intersect M, right? This set, this function, right? B with this function. So we just change this to this, and this one to this one. We just change it. Then we have this one is open in M, and this one, some, something's going off. Let me just check. So this set is open in HN, maps to here. Well, we also have the carries A to M to here. So boundary points, if it's in M, on M about P, on F. By parsi of the lemma. Okay, so by parsi of the lemma, this is open in HN, right? And this point P, P is an M, right? This point P is equal to some coordinate patch, some coordinate patch under the point on the axis set, right? Then it implies that M is the boundary point, right? Well, if you're not on the boundary point, 
which means that you're on the interior points. If you're on the interior points of N, which means it exists according to patch, right, on N, and the domain is open in Rn. If you're in N, but you're not, if you're in N, but not on M, then you're strictly greater than zero, right? So if you're strictly greater than zero, then you're in the interior point, right? Because the coordinate patch, the domain is open in Rn. So we have that if not an M, we implies that you're not, wait, what have we done? We have done that if you're in M, right? Then you're in the boundary point. Now, if you're not in M, you're in the interior point, so you're not in the boundary point. So by contrapositive, right? So this direction, okay, we're done. We're chilling, we're chilling, we're chilling. Okay, good, okay. Oh my gosh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so now we have a new definition. So a sphere, a minus a sphere, is just the closure of the, of the, of the n-dimensional ball in Rn. It's just the closure. So here the radius one, and this side is just s one one radius one dimension one, n minus one because we're two D planes. Okay, this is a boring definition. Okay, so here's a corollary. So the corollary states that oh. The ball is the n manifold in R n, and the sphere is the boundary. This is, so we just define this function. Then the derivative is given like this: as zero on this set, as greater than zero, and here. So we can just apply the last theorem, right? So and also is not zero when it's on the sphere because. If you're on a sphere, it can't all be zero, right? You can't all be zero. Otherwise, you're just on the origin. You're just you're not on the sphere because sphere has a radius greater than zero, right? <laughs> then we have, then we're done. Okay. So, okay. So this concludes this section. Not this this lecture. I'm sorry. All right. Goodbye.